What's up, everybody? Happy Friday, Junior. I am the Well and Wingnut, a.k.a. the Metal Mennonite, for the purposes of this show, so we don't confuse the two Steves, because, as we all know, with me every week is the one and only Sir Steve McGinnis. What's up? How's Metal it going, Steve? I got it right this time. Yeah, exactly. Opposite. Opposite. I know, right? It's so odd. <laughs> so how's it going, man? It is going good. How's it going on your end? It's going good. Uh, I had a little uh, little head injury this week, so uh, I do apologize if I'm uh, maybe uh, a little medicated and uh, <laughs> you black out or <laughs> black out in the middle of the show. I feel like someone's behind me there. Uh, we do apologize for to everyone who came, tuned in uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we were supposed to have Vernon Wells on the program. Unfortunately, there was uh, uh, something that was uh, uncontrollable, but uh, we have rescheduled him, so we will have Vernon Wells back. And uh, this week, uh, we're hoping to bring you another Vernon, uh, this time a Leslie Vernon, as you see behind me, uh, yeah. a.k.a. Nathan ba ba Basel. Basel, I believe. Ba Basel, yeah. I hope I got that right. Uh, yeah, we're just waiting for him to join us. So uh, we're going to get into the get into everything. And uh, hopefully it's not too long uh, before Nate and Nathan pops in. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the rise of Leslie Vernon and uh, what he's been up to lately. So uh, but in the meantime, we've got other stuff to talk about. We, we don't come unprepared. Uh, we'd like to wish a happy 73rd birthday to Miss Shelly Duvall. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we love Shelly. Uh, uh, we're both big Shining fans. Uh, we're both big Shelly fans. Uh, we're, we're glad that she got her Razzie uh, rescinded a few yeah. months back uh, for the treatment that uh, came to light about uh, her being treated on set. With Stanley Kubrick, yeah. yeah. This, how can you not feel bad for this poor woman looking at this photo, eh? Yeah. Like I mean, eyes and everything. Like, she's been crying for so long. Like, that poor woman. Yeah. And I mean, the performance, I mean, how could you dominate her for a Razzie? I mean, regardless of how she got there, the performance exactly. was just. How did that happen? Yeah. Because it, it was raw and it was real. Like she was actually like having a breakdown right there, especially when Jack was coming at her up the stairs. Yeah. You know, so man, that was rough. Yeah, she's uh, basically uh, like semi-retired now, I was reading today, and uh, lives in a little town uh, just outside of uh, San Antonio, Texas. So, uh, really? she's just, Yeah, she's just happy, chilling, being a local right now. And, uh, That's good. Yeah, so yeah, we're happy for Shelly. I'm and, really uh, happy she's happy. Not to bring everybody down, but uh, there was some bad news today as well. And uh, if you're a horror fan, if you're a fan of suspense and thriller, you, you loved it the movie Misery with Kathy Bates and James Caan. Oh. Uh, of course, James so Caan passing away today at the age of 82. Yeah, man. I always remember him from that, and I'm a big uh, Mafia movie fan, so he's sunny for me. Okay. The famous yeah. scene uh, where he gets machine gun at the uh, toll booths. Eh? Oh, my God. That, that was crazy. Yeah, he, he got uh, definitely typecast into that role, uh, being in The Godfathers, uh, you know, uh, did a bunch of mob roles, tough guy roles. Yeah, uh, he was always the enforcer, right? Eh? But then we saw him in stuff like Elf. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and Elf. Can, Confession Time, I've never seen Elf. Are you serious? Yeah, and, and I love Will Ferrell and I love James Caan. It's just, uh, oh my yeah, God. It's, it's one of those movies I've never seen. Wow. Goodness, this season we got to have you over for an elf night. Like that's like <laughs> my wife and son's favorite Christmas movie. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I I've seen it. I got to admit, I uh, Will Ferrell is like Ipecac for me. Like if I see him, I just throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't like Will Ferrell at all. But yeah. I watch it. I, I like Will Ferrell, but I, I I can see I can see that definitely. Uh, and then, uh, you know, not, not a lot, lot of horror roles for Mr. Mr. Khan, but uh, just a great body of work. Rollerball was a classic oh. for his time, 1975. So good. Got remade in, what, 90s? Late yeah. 90s, early 2000s, I'm going to say? Yeah, I went to see it, 
and uh, it was nothing compared to the grittiness of the original Rollerball. Like, yeah, it was much more glam, uh, much more Hollywood. Do you remember watching the? Uh, it was roller derby with the wall and the gator pit. No, it used to be on on the on the weekends. On I think it was on Fox. It, it had to have been on Fox. I was just gonna say that's that station. It's like, because Spike TV wasn't around yet, so it had to have been Fox. Yeah, that was that was that was pretty wild. Uh, really? and then of course Brian's song, uh, 1971, uh, acclaimed yeah. for that. You know, I'm pretty sure he won some awards for that. Oh, for sure. Uh, Bulletproof, another another funny comedic role uh, with uh, the Damon Wayans and Adam Sandler. He plays obviously the tough bad guy. In that. Yeah, he's kind of been pigeonholed as that, eh? like, which is yeah. funny. He's not a great big giant guy. No. Yeah, I, I love that's my boy. It's kind of like the Joe Pesci of the modern mafia movies, where Pesci's the kind of out of control, nutty killer guy. Like yeah. Casino, Goodfellas. He always he seems to be typecast as that. And then uh, earlier in the week, we had another uh, death. Uh, oh. We lost Joel Turkle. Uh, famous for being in Blade Runner, uh, Shining, obviously, here is the bartender. Uh, this guy had over 100 film and TV credits. Just a great character actor. Oh, that's right. He was the creator in, uh, that Rooker Hauer uh, wanted to talk to in Blade right. Runner. Right. But that, that photo right there you had of, from The Shining was so chilling when he's talking to Jack. Yeah. And uh, here, as you were talking about this scene with Rudger Hauer, the late Rudger Hauer as well. Oh, man. We're losing them all there. Yeah. I, I was a big 80s guy, obviously. We were, you know, we were at that age in the 80s, and I was a huge Rudger Hauer fan. And he was scheduled to be at Fan Expo. Really? Uh, the I think two months, maybe a month and a half before he passed. And I was, uh, that was the first year when Ratchet TV had, Ratchet TV had media passes. So I was really hoping to, to get to interview Rudger Hauer, but wasn't meant to be. He has always been one of my favorite actors, like um, The Blood of Heroes. I don't know if you've seen that one, the post-apocalyptic, like, it's a weird, it, it, okay, I'm going to explain it, and it sounds weird. <laughs> post-apocalyptic kind of Mad Max era. These people are entertained by these traveling sports players, and there's like five people on a team, and instead of a ball, you use a dog's skull. And uh, and people die while playing this. Like some guys have chains with hooks on the end of them. It is awesome. And Rooker Howe is like awesome, you know, as usual in it. I uh, I had to find this one movie on Amazon. I bought it because I couldn't find it on any streaming site. It was called. Uh, it had a different name, but then it got because of legal issues. They had to call it something else in a different country oh. or whatever. You know, it was one of those things. Wedlock. Oh, okay. I thought it might have been Split Second. So this was uh this was basically a prison, a futuristic prison with no walls, no fences, no locked doors, and you were you were te- you were paired up with another prisoner, but you didn't know who it was, and you had a caller. So if any any one of you got within however many feet the prison perimeter was, boom would go your head. No way. Yeah. That's and awesome. so obviously Rudger Hauer finds out who he's paired with and they try to escape together. And the whole movie is them trying to escape and also stay within whatever, you know, 500 feet of each other. So it was, it was pretty awesome. That is cool. What's the name of that? How uh, wed- wedlock. Wow. All right. Wow. That's a Rooker one I haven't seen. So now you're here with me, Orlock back there. Some plague doctors and Art the Clown. Oh, Metal Man and Ice back. Yeah, I was gonna try to find it for you, but uh, <clears throat> that's cool. I'm gonna have to um, to be that. We, we, we got Facebook user working on it. So nice. I love Split Second too in the '90s. Yeah, Blind uh, Fury. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, The Hitcher. That by far the Hitcher. Oh my God! You'll never redo that performance no no that was, that was definitely something else yeah. all right uh so as we move along here uh this was kind of a strange story uh and it wasn't her first pick to be her directorial debut uh like a lot of uh, hollywood movies 
some of them get you know into pre-production and then just kind of fall through the cracks so uh this is her was her fourth attempt at trying uh, to make her directorial debut and uh daughter of the late robin williams mrs zelda williams oh wow will be directing uh rom zomb as she called it uh lisa frankenstein We'll still, we'll star Cole Sprouse and Catherine Newton uh, will be about a high school student who accidentally reanimates a Victorian corpse. Whoa. <laughs> As there's silence, eh? there it is. Yes. With, uh, who is that in there? Uh, Mimi, uh, Mimi Rogers. Oh, wow. Yeah, Mimi Rogers. Yeah. Classic. That's crazy. How have I not heard of this? great great movie oh my god yeah i i used to bug the guys at the nfcc constantly to bring in rooker howard and they're like uh, i don't know if he'd draw and i'm like he's been in everything he was everything in, yeah he was even in um frank miller's um sin city he was in batman like the guy's been in everything yeah we we, we could do a whole show just on rutger howard i'd be down with that yeah no, yeah, I was I was a huge, huge fan. Oh, same here. The guy was brilliant. So yeah, uh, getting a modern day uh, uh, Frankenstein movie uh, looks like it's going to be kind of a romantic comedy, uh, as she jo- jokingly said, a rom zomb, as in zombie. So uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I t- what's that? I see where she was going with that first. I, at first, I'm like rom zomb. What is that? <laughs> um. Yeah, all right. So, Orphan First Kill. <clears throat> we got our first look. Uh, the 2009 original uh, starring Isabel Furman as uh, Esther. Did you see these movies? Yes, I did. I saw the first one. The first one, right? They, there, there's already a couple, isn't there? I believe so. I thought I've there was only, a sequel. I've only seen one. And... Yeah, I, I've only seen the first one myself. I like uh, it. This one is going to be a prequel, which uh, to me uh, seemed weird considering, you know, we're like 13 years later and she's going to have to try and play younger now. Yeah. Oh, wow. How are they going to do that? They, there's no way they have the budget to CGI her look younger. There's no Yeah, to do the, the, the Star Wars thing, right? Where they, yeah. they de-age. Yeah, I don't know. This is, uh, this is going to be interesting. It, could have, it would have been better if they picked a younger star. Um, to play her, and then maybe she was another character, kind of like a nod to her, you know what I mean? Right. Because right now, yeah, I'm looking at that, and I don't know. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that'll be a tough sell. Yeah, for sure. For, for a prequel, anyways, for a prequel. Is it an indie? I'm not sure. Mm. I don't have a studio. Uh, yeah, speaking of remakes, reboots, uh, reimaginings, we don't know for sure if this is going to be a Rosemary's baby prequel, but what? rumors are that John Krasinski uh, is, is on to produce a movie called apartment seven. A that's going to star Julie Gardner from Ozark's fame. Oh, wow. And uh, the, the script is really being kept hush hush, but uh, that, that seems to be the, the leaked rumor that this is going to be some form of uh, Rosemary's baby prequel. I, I love those arts. I love Julie Gardner. Yes. She acted her ass off in Ozark. Like, man, that was so well done. Did you see it all the way to the end? I have seen the last few. So I'm okay. supposed to wait. Okay. I, I yeah. won't say anything then. I've been warned. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm down for this. Uh John Krasinski, you know, he's killing it with uh The Quiet Place and uh, a few other projects that he he's had. So uh yeah, I'm, I'm down. He's Reed Richards in the MCU now. Yeah. And uh, like I said, you just you can't go wrong with, uh, with no. Julie Gardner right now. She's just uh, she, she seems to be the it girl. She is. We just uh, what was that? We just watched that one with her where she's playing that Russian um, diva. Oh, yeah. Uh, is it Netflix? Yes. I it was Netflix. Yeah, I haven't checked it out yet, but I, I did have it on my list. I had no idea that was true. And then we watched it and then I started Googling everything. It was crazy, man, how much money she got. All right. Um, I know you were a fan of this next movie or this next franchise. Uh, 
Halloween three season of the witch. You, you like that movie, right? I did. did. I, yeah. Did you not like that? I mean, going back and uh, you know, like you said, just kind of looking at it as, as its own separate movie. Yes. But in the moment it was all about, like, where the fuck's Mike? Yes. You know what? Right. I felt the same way when I was a kid. I'm like, okay, where's Myers? Yeah. And I felt kind of gypped um, all those years. But then I realized this is kind of a standalone. Like, right. it, you know what I mean? Which is what they were originally talking about was this is really, was going to be some kind of universe where, but the, the Mike, the Myers character just did so well that he ended up being in the second one too. So, oh, wow. So, yeah. But uh, we're getting a fan film that will be out this October called uh, the third channel. And it's going to be a uh, reimagining of Halloween's season of the witch. It will release in October, which will be the 40th anniversary of that movie. And they will film in the same location. Uh, no way. Film the original. Uh, so silver shamrock lives. I hope they still have that jingle. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man i know don't do that i'll be stuck in my head the rest of the night now <laughs> as you're having epileptic seizures <laughs> yeah i'm down I, I like the whole fan film thing yeah i like that well when they're done well uh, i i have enjoyed uh, quite a few of these so oh yeah what was that friday the 13th one yeah don't hike in the woods or something like that. That was awesome. Don't hike alone or something. Yeah. Yeah. That was very well done. It was really good. Um, the black phone that that's all the rage right now in, in the horror horror world in the movie world. Uh, it's doing incredibly well. It had an $18 million budget. It's uh, North of 80 million now. That's awesome. World worldwide. So, uh, big hit for, uh, Mr. Ethan Hawk. Uh, I can't wait to see this one. I know. I've been itching to see this one by Joe Hill, Stephen King's son. I read the, the book and yeah, it is so good. It seems from what I've seen, they were keeping it very close to the story. Yeah, no, that, that sounds awesome. And speaking of keep, keeping it uh, close to the story, that's uh, the perfect segue for our next story. Uh, we got the movie poster Oh man! for Rob Zombie's Monsters. Has a bit of a goosebumps feel, eh? It does. It really does. Uh, you know, we he, we found out that it was going to be PG, uh, oh. which, which we figured. You know, yeah. um, he's a big fan of the the, the original, and he doesn't want to you know do it wrong. So, uh, but uh, not to be left out, Mister Butch Patrick, nice who uh, played Eddie Munster, of course, will be in the new one. But kind of a weird choice for to bring him back. I mean, I get, I guess, I get the full circle part of it, but. We're not going to get to see his face because he's going to be playing Tin Can Man. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, if you're familiar with the show, uh, do you remember this episode? Yes. Yeah, the episode. I used to love that show. What's that? I used to just absolutely love that show. Yeah, so this is the episode where uh, Grandpa helps uh, Eddie with his science project and creates uh, a robot to try and win the science fair, basically. So, wow. I know Rob and Butch are actually friends. Like, I've seen clips of him at Butch's place with the uh, Dragula and everything, like with the Monster Mobile or whatever you call it. I think Butch owns it. Okay. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I think they're pretty tight. So, I, I, it's probably safe to assume they'll have the original Monster Mobile in the, in the movie then. Yes. Yeah, because I've seen Rob posting pics, um, and they've had the Monster Mobile around there on the lane. So, oh, cool! I would, I would expect to see it. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Well, uh, that brings us to the the end of the news. So, we're hey, you know what I have news? Guess what I have this week? Oh, that that's right. I forgot. I, I had those pictures at the bottom here because I just loaded them. Da, 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 da. Book two, Terrifier of Terrifier, was just announced by Damien, and uh, yeah, you've got close to sixty something pages of just pure carnage. So go to terrifiershop.com, get yourself a copy of it. Awesome. 
yeah. It, this one was fun. I had to bust out the medical textbooks. <laughs> I had a scene and I was adding in like all these organs and like, oh, it was crazy. Nice. So much fun. Uh, appreciate the accuracy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, yeah, the, this movie will be out uh, hopefully this Halloween. It's scheduled to be out this Halloween. Which one? The sequel, uh, the, the sequel to Terrifier 2. That's what they've said. They've uh, they finally found someone to um, distribute it and everything. So I guess it's going to be out at, in October, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. So congrats to the guys like David, Phil, um, Damien, all of them. Like, that's awesome. And of course, Halloween, uh, Halloween ends will be out in October as well. Yeah, I saw something about John Carpenter saying it's taken a different path or something. Like, did you read that today? No. Yeah, Carpenter put out a, a post or a tweet that he's somehow seen the script or knows the workings of the last uh, film. And he says it's taken a definite departure from what he envisioned. So hmm. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, I know. I read that today. I was kind of like, what? Like, isn't he part of it still? So. Yeah. Well, it'd be yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, if, if we even get an October release date, then if uh, maybe I have to go back and do some reshoots or. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of worried about. Because yeah. he's got a lot of weight in Hollywood. If he starts saying, no, you're not releasing this, we might not get it then. Hmm. Well. Uh, so yeah, uh, like th this, this, uh, this movie that, uh, we were hoping to have, uh, we're still, we're, we're, we're waiting, but, uh, Mr. Nathan ba Basel, uh, of course, stars as, uh, Leslie Vernon in, uh, Behind the Mask, which is, uh, it's like what, 15, 16 years old now? Yeah. Tw uh, 2006. So yeah, 16 years old. Wow. In my uh, top five of movies, if any of you guys out there haven't seen it, definitely see it. Yeah, as you can see, the cast: uh, Mr. Nathan Basel, uh, Angela Gothals, Gothals. So. Uh, I apologize. I'm sure I hacked that. Zelda Rubenstein, of course, from Poltergeist fame. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Scott Wilson from just, I mean, and turn on a TV and you'll you'll find Scott Wilson because that guy's been in everything. Oh yeah. Uh, and of course, course Robert. Yeah, yeah Robert England, uh, Mr. Freddy Cougar himself. Yeah. Yeah, you, you turned me on to this movie. I remember you talking to me talking to me about it a while back. And then uh, when we started talking about the podcast and having guests on, we thought, you know, well, maybe, maybe we could get Leslie. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm like, I remember you talking about this movie. So I had to find it. I had to look it up and I watched it. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know how this one escaped me. It is really interesting, like so well written because it kind of breaks that fourth barrier, right? Like they, they, they mention um, Jason, Michael Myers, Freddie. Like, even if you look in the background, there's the little girls with the, the dresses playing Skippy. Oh, in right. The of a few of the scenes. And uh, the nods to other films is unbelievable in this. Yeah, it uh, definitely played, uh, paid homage to uh, plenty of the classics. Uh, and it was awesome to get uh, so many great horror actors just you know from so many great movies to to cameo in it as well right exactly i think my one of my favorite parts is when he's working out and he's like you don't you can't believe how much cardio i have to do like i have to run like a gazelle and then show up in front of the person um with not even breathing hard you know like it's so good yeah yeah uh, of course, Zelda Williams, uh, or Zelda Williams, <laughs> my apologies, Zelda Rubenstein, yeah. <laughs> thinking She's of, uh, great as a librarian, I love her voice. Yeah, oh, great, like, just part of what made Poltergeist so creepy was, was just her and her, her voice, like you said, and just the way she spoke and carried herself, it was just, yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. I'll never forget that in Poltergeist at the end. Of, this house is clean. <laughs> like finally. <laughs> and uh, Jim Carrey does the 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 parody of it in Ace Ventura. Oh yes. Yeah. That's right. And you know, uh, what was it? Cable Boy. I never put it together because I'd seen this movie a lot like a long time ago. And then I saw it again, like not 
not that many years ago with Amber because she had never seen it was Midnight Express. Oh wow, that's an old school one, man. Yeah, great movie. Uh, true story, based on a true story. The drug. The drug and I didn't realize that that scene in Cable Guy was a parody of when his girlfriend comes to visit him. Yeah, he's got his nipple up against the glass. Against the glass. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh my god. Oh man, that was so good. Yeah, yeah, we we, we love us some uh, good. Good old Canadian boys like Jim Carrey. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, another great actor from The Walking Dead and just just everything. Like I said, this guy, he was TV, movies, just popped up everywhere throughout his career, uh, including Niagara Falls oh, wow. Comic Con. Look, look at how small Austin is. Holy cow. Like you saw him this year. He, he's right. a, a, a full inch past me. Oh, yeah, he's like a good 6'2 now or something now? Yeah, easily, yeah. easily. Damn. Yeah. There'll be something in the water down there. Right? I know, what's with these kids? Even my son's like 6'2 now. It's like, where are they getting this? We didn't it's have hard. nutrition when we were growing up. We had all those sugary cereals and like like Pop-Tarts and crap like that. That's, That's stuck in our growth. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, like, you know, I just and then obviously going down the rabbit hole, just seeing like, you know, fan art like this movie has taken on a life of its own. It, it's got such a huge cult following. I know. Right. And for years, we've been kind of left in limbo that apparently there's a script written a uh, prequel to Behind the Mask. Right. And I guess they crowdfunded for a while. And I'm not sure what happened to it, even on um on uh nathan's page it's it's listed on the page but it's there's no date so i'm not sure what happened yeah i'm not sure what happened uh there either uh but uh like you said it was uh it was featured last year on uh dead meets kill count oh nice which i mean that's when you know you've made it as a horror movie when you're you've been on kill count like yeah because all the I didn't even know about I didn't even know what kill count wasn't you know until my 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 son turned me on to it a few years back. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, in 2018, in March, we got the the re-release of the Blu-ray. Dreadful cover art. <laughs> I, <laughs> like you can <laughs> Robert England's face there. Right? Right? Like, he looks like. Uh, he looks like somebody from Faulty Towers or something. <laughs> he does. The, the whole three of them on that right side. <laughs> like, come on. Oh, my God. Yeah. When I saw that when it came out, I was just like, seriously, how am I not doing this? Like, oh, my God. Just dreadful. Oh, my God. <laughs> Faulty towers. <laughs> well, uh, we uh, don't want to keep you waiting any longer, so uh, please give a two big two severed heads welcome to uh, our guest and uh, man of the hour, uh, the legendary Mr. Nathan Basel from the rise of Leslie Vernon. As I try and get away rid of the picture here. Hey, there we go. Hey. My that's better. My math is just the worst. <laughs> did yeah, and you didn't even catch, did you? When you said seven thirty your time, I added six hours in my calculations. <laughs> as 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 though you were running this program from the East Coast, and I was going to go all the way over to Europe, so that. I could do this at 10. Wow. <laughs> well, hey, you made it and uh, just in time. So we, we thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for coming on. You're welcome. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, good seeing you. So uh, L.A. time. Yeah, this is L.A. time is four hours, I mean, three hours yeah. less than, right, than the less. time you gave me. Yeah, we, we, we had some confusion with a guest uh, two weeks ago. We were supposed to have Vernon uh, Vernon Wells uh, from uh, uh, Commando. Guys, Commando. Yeah, yeah and uh, we, we had a bit of a time issue there as well. So uh, 
<laughs> Hopefully we can get that that little more. I've been doing it. calculations for time changing for forever and this is just embarrassing i've got i've got no good excuse there. <laughs> well we forgive you and uh the, the, i'm sure our viewers forgive you uh but uh yeah uh, thanks a lot for being here and uh so what, what, what's been going on uh lately oh boy well i don't know if you heard but there's this thing COVID going around and uh it kind of uh threw everything um uh head over heels so yeah it's basically just trying to get life back to some sense of normalcy been, been doing some writing maybe taking advantage of the time for sure yeah yeah for sure. sure i mean that's that's kind of the best most constructive way to get through all of this is uh to uh you know reflect and do some i don't know writing and some kind of incisive i don't know guys i'm just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on so <laughs> <laughs> well uh speaking of reflecting you've had 16 years to reflect on yeah. uh, behind the mask uh the rise of leslie vernon uh, yeah. a movie uh mr mcginnis uh turned me on to uh a while back so uh it's a pleasure to have you here uh i don't know how this movie eluded me i'm a huge horror fan and uh this one just this, this one went over my head for a few years and uh I, I did the whole deep dive thing and uh we were just talking about uh what a huge cult following it's had. I mean, uh, it was featured on Dead Meats, Kill Count on YouTube, which is uh, hugely popular. Um, my son loves that show. Uh, we had the re-release in 2018 on Blu-ray. Uh, Steve loved the cover art. <laughs> Dreadful. <laughs> uh, so uh, well, well, how, does, how does it feel to, to still know that this movie's making such an impact 16 years later with uh, people like me? Well, it's cool that this movie is rolled like that you know there are some movies that um that they keep they keep staying around because they've got that um uh maybe not recognition factor but they've got the entertainment factor you know um, it's a recommendation that you can feel pretty confident if you know who you're recommending to you know what their likes and dislikes are in general then it's a pretty safe recommendation that you know as long as you're not look into I, yeah it's it's a good time you know if you're looking to have a good time here's a good time movie you know? and, and, and you were so lucky to be surrounded by just such a great cast uh, oh, yeah. and, and angela uh robert scott uh, scott yeah um uh, <laughs> zelda what, what was that like working with just horror legends yeah, it was horror legends, and uh, and it was my first movie, um, so I didn't know really what the heck I was doing, and um, and I was just kind of going off of instinct. Uh, but here I had these, um, you know, these folks who'd been around and done it, and um, they knew exactly what to do, and uh, were helpful and pointing out for me some of the some of the do's and don'ts um robert for instance was really um helpful when we were doing scenes with him um where we were actually coming into grapple you know contact with each other and you know he knew where to where to you know position our bodies so that the camera was going to pick up you know the the you know his shoulder was going to hide the entry of the blade when I'm stabbing him and you know and and we'd be able to get that with that we wouldn't have to do a cutaway we could get the whole thing in one shot and you know he just had a great sensibility because he's probably been in just about any kind of kill he, he was the go-to for how do we pull off this kill great you know yeah. and um, yeah so that's that's who we had you know and and Scott Wilson I mean he cool. he's you know, just you look up, look up his his you know IMDb. You know, just look up his his. You know, the guy's done everything. And, and just before you had come on, we were talking about just the, how yeah. much stuff that guy has been in over the years. Even and you, got, you had a lot of screen time with him. Yeah, and and uh, for a critical relationship, a relationship that um, if if audiences didn't buy into um, our friendship. 
and mentorship, um, then they really didn't have any reason to sign on for the whole deal because um, it was Scott's character that was really um, creating that sensibility of, of this is what Leslie's hoping for um, as a measure of his success. He's hoping to have that life after and that uh, uh, he's hoping to be able to, you know, have a retirement and enjoy retirement with his final girl, you know, and the, the um, 401k being K for kills. Yeah. Hey, it's different for different folks. Right. Um, but you know, the portrayal that Scott did of, of, you know, this is the life that could be, um, was a really essential component, I think, for the movie yeah. having the heart that it does. Definitely. Yeah, Scott was a great guy. We were reflecting back on uh, when he was at Niagara Falls Comic Con a few years back. Uh, my son is a full inch taller than me now, so that tells you how long <laughs> ago that was. Uh, just uh, was such a great guy. Uh, lo loved him in uh, just everything growing up in the 80s and 90s. Uh, see, seeing him as a great character actor. So, yeah. Um, and I can't remember the, the actress's name, but uh, this young lady ended up being uh, in Shameless. She played uh, Lip's girlfriend in Shameless, uh, which she, she was just great in. So, yeah, she ended up having a, a pretty great career herself. Yeah, kids doing well. And she's got a band, too. They make oh, does she? Great music. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Nice. What genre? I'm sorry? What genre is she uh, playing? Um, I can't remember the name of the band, but, um, but the genre is um, kind of... Uh, Oh gosh, I'm not good enough with music genres. I, I I would like peg her in a genre, and and she'd be probably like, no, that is so. Not <laughs> but um, uh, it's kind of folky, kind of um, it, it's got kind of a kind of a country feel to it. Um, I, I find as we get older, there's so much, so many more subgenres just being mashed together. Uh, like I mean, it's it, it's just the way it has to go, right? Uh, everybody's being inspired by things that were inspired by something that was inspired by something. So right, yeah. And and some people are very very particular about what that genre sounds like and and uh, what's what's allowed, it, it what's included and what's what's not allowed to be included. And uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know genres, but uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, Steve uh, so kindly gave me the nickname the Metal Mennonite a few years ago, so I decided to use that as my my uh, name in the show. Uh, what's uh, what's your go to genre when you just want to lay back and listen to some tunes? Um, well, I was just listening to a little jazz earlier, and um, I guess jazz in general is kind of my go to. Um, uh, I. I don't. Uh, I'm not really hip on the current current trends. I, 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 I've got two boys, a uh, uh, 19 and 15 year old, and they actually uh, get me, you know, schooled about what's what's cool and what I should be paying attention to. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm, t I'm taking music recommendations from my 15 year old, which is pretty pretty wild. Steve and I aren't cool anymore either, so yeah, we, we, we haven't been in a few years. No. But I can pretend like I'm cool every now and then. He throws me a bone, and I, I, you know, like, uh, gosh, uh, the other week he was playing a Childish Gambino album, like an artist I never would have, you know, never would I, 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 uh, I his uh, uh, This Is America uh, track made a lot of buzz last year, but. Um, which I was impressed by, but uh, he, he played a full length album for me. And I was like, yeah, this is amazing. I never would have, but thank you. Yeah. Um, and I, I came out of obviously, you know, my growing up in my house, there was a lot of Elvis, a lot of Johnny Cash. Uh, my dad was a big fan. So, uh, and then obviously I, I was a classic rock kid, got into the metal in the nineties. So my, 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 my taste is kind of all over the place. I, I always, I always said I wanted to call up Guinness, the world book of records. Cause I'm pretty sure I'm the only guy that's ever seen Gordon Lightfoot and Cannibal Corpse. So put that out there, Guinness. <laughs> on the same bill? Were they like on the same show? No, they weren't on the same bill. Yeah, that would have been something. <laughs> yeah. No, well, that's awesome. Uh, Steve, you had a couple questions about a few scenes in uh, Leslie Vernon. Yeah, so I, I watched that movie. I just watched it the other night as I was illustrating. And I usually have them on in the background. I always go to Leslie Vernon's in my top five. And I got to ask, the library scene. 
that one. Paradise yeah. found it. Um, was that written in, or was that ad libbed? Uh, well, it wasn't in the script, um, but it wasn't exactly ad libbed because we um, I, we were do, having a party in somebody's hotel room and. And somebody said Paradise Lost found it, and I don't remember who. I don't. I've asked. I've asked around, and nobody has fessed up. But somebody <laughs> said it. I thought it was hilarious, and um, and uh, it's time for the uh, elote guy. <laughs> Anybody want elote? He's also got shavings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like blue. Um, Toto, you you want all the fixings? Okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, uh, I, we, I knew that the last day of shooting was at the library. And, and so I asked, um, uh, our prop person if we could just kind of find a copy of it. Somewhere. It was a library. There had to be a copy of Paradise Lost somewhere around there, you know? So, so yeah, they found one and I shoved it in the stack when I knew where we were going to be at. I asked the director if it was okay for me to, uh, okay, I'll take credit for it. <laughs> yeah, it was my idea, and uh, it, it worked. It, it worked. It, you know, there, there, there wasn't a whole lot of room for improv. I know that it, it's got a kind of free and easy feel. Um, yeah. Uh, kind of loosey goosey, but that that was really mainly in the script. Um, so we didn't have to veer too far from script to give it that that feel. Uh, but that was one area where I was able to just just give it something a little more. A little more loosey goosey than it was tending to be. That's great. Yeah. The other one I thought too was uh, we're going to crush some apples and juice is going to come out. This one. And I thought that had to be like, especially it looked like you were about to break as you were <laughs> saying that. Was yeah. That that was that was a fun moment for me and one of the few moments i i i've seen it enough uh i don't really need to see the movie anymore but um when that scene does roll around i i, I get a little goose from that too because it was i was having a little bit of fun i you know what i think that might have been in the script too but yeah we, i think we were all feeling a little punchy uh what are you up to now and are you coming back to michigan yeah definitely i i didn't get to i didn't get to to do the whole Detroit thing. So I got to get back there to uh, hey, you're, you're a Michigan, Michigan guy. Um, no, I just did a con out there, uh, last oh, year yeah. and, and, um, and it was a uh, really cool Midwest monster fest. And, um, good, good, good people and, and uh, great venue. And yeah, right, so I'm, I'm a, I'm a big diehard Red Wings fan. So I've spent a lot of time in Detroit and, uh, I, I absolutely love, love the city. I was really hoping to get away to uh, to check the city out a little bit, but uh, I don't know. Those weekends are usually, you know, yeah, yeah. a lot of activity. And, you know. They're whirlwinds. Yeah. And plus, you know, you want to, uh, you know, be, be at the events, the special events that they have planned around um, the signing hours just because it's, you know, might not be, you might not be back for a while. So you, you want to, Make sure that you're seeing everybody and and uh, making everybody happy. So, have you done any cons in Canada? No, no. We gotta get you up here. Yeah, I've now I've never uh, been out of country for any cons. I've I've had um, interest um, expressed to some cons, uh, one in UK, I think, but um, but uh, yeah, nothing's ever uh, nothing's ever happened yet. Oh wow. That's cool. Yeah, well, we got to get you up here. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down. You, do, you know, just all I need is ticket and airfare. Uh, you know, to 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 get out there, maybe a hotel room that'd be nice. But uh, <laughs> we 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 may know some people. Yeah. yeah, you put me up on somebody's couch. Yeah, <laughs> love seat maybe couch. Um, so when I was, uh, when I was checking out your IMBD, this was something I saw here too. Uh, is this something that's, uh, out yet or is still in pre-production it says? Yeah. Pre-production still. Um, we shot a, uh, trailer, um, content for that so that, um, my friend Andy who wrote it and is directing it, he, um, was using that trailer for, um, uh, fundraising purposes. And oh, gotcha. so I think he's still on the hunt for, 
for the financials of it, but um, yeah, it was a good script. I, I, I'm so blessed to be uh, surrounded by friends that are so stinking talented uh, writing, you know, and Andy's one of those people who just can write a really, really clean script where you just know where it's coming from, where it's going to, and, um, and you're enjoying the ride. So uh, yeah, hopefully he gets that thing going. Uh, my, my phone's lighting up right now, and by by uh, the, the sounds of who's calling, I'm sure it has something to do with the NHL draft right now. Hmm. But we're, we're going to let that sit. <laughs> are you breathing? Are you? Uh, do you like where things are shaping up for next season? Uh, yeah, uh, we definitely have a future. I, I'm glad uh, you know we have the Iser plan in place. So uh, I'm really hoping he can uh, he can turn the ship around. I just watched uh, the E60 documentary last night, Unrivaled. Uh, between the the rivalry between Colorado and Detroit uh, in the, the late '90s, there, man. Hmm. My girlfriend left the room just in time because I was uh, I was tearing up a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> the Eiserman years, yeah, yeah, the Eiserman yeah. years. So those were some good years for us. Awesome. So uh, we we can we can hope uh, keep our fingers crossed for Crossbow Creek. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, and, uh, watching a few interviews with you this week, uh, I was hoping to, uh, hoping to ask, you know, I always like to try and ask something that, you know, doesn't get asked a lot. You know, I know guys hate answering the same questions over and over and over again, at least some questions, but, uh, you, you did a lot of stuff for, uh, Spike TV and, um, you did, uh, some editing for Day of the Deadliest Catch, uh, just uh, two of my favorite shows. And I thought a thousand ways to die. Was there ever a story on a thousand ways to die? that didn't make it to air that just totally blew your mind that you can maybe share with us here. Um, I, I wasn't on the creative end for a thousand ways, but, um, but yeah, it was a show that just could, it just keeps, it just sells itself. You know what I mean? It's kind of, it's kind of crazy that it's you not, me watching. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that we're not still cranking out episode after episode for that is, uh, it's, it's kind of wild because, um, yeah, everybody knows what that show is. They know what they're getting. Yeah, and, uh, and it's exactly what you're, you know, expecting. A lot of our shows are like that. You know, you, you tune in because you 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 know the format and you're you're familiar with the feel of the whole thing. Yeah. And so you know, people just want something to take a nap to or something like that that gives them a warm fuzzies in the meantime. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy time too. Like uh, we're we're all of a certain age where uh, we grew up with you know a handful of channels. And I uh, used to have to switch over to UHF and uh, work the work the bunny years to try and watch uh, Morton Downey Jr. live way past my bedtime. You know, <laughs> I remember in the TV that my parents had in their bedroom, um, you had to there was a book of matches and you had to shove the book of matches in uh, between the turning dial and the set because just that plug, that dial plug was just enough to affect the how things were coming in and uh you still had to do all the nonsense with the antenna and everything like that but you had to have that that the, the little matches booklet show. as uh, as the bundies used to say uh fox viewing positions and they'd all yeah. get there that was our house in the early 80s on hockey night in canada if montreal was playing i had to assume the position of holding the rabbit ears so my dad could watch montreal and uh I remember when we got the first remotes, uh, the first ones had cords on them. Yeah. And uh, the way our living room was laid out was my dad sat at the, the other end on his couch and the cord didn't reach all the way to his spot. So I used to have to lie on the floor and he'd be like, Steven, channel five. Steven, you channel were the seven. remote. So I was the remote. You were the remote. The remote controlled boy. That's awesome. Well, uh, do you have anything else, Steve? Oh, well, I'm good right now. All right, uh, we're uh, we're coming close to uh, our usual uh, time, so uh, we, we thank you, thank you very much uh, for being on uh, and making it in time to have have a sit and chat with us. Uh, I know. Uh, oh, we got a couple more comments here. We'll try and get to. And I'm sorry for not jumping on earlier, but yeah, no worries. But uh, thanks for holding the door. Uh, Shutter and Tubi, yeah, Shutter and Tubi are great for people like us. Uh, me and Steve, who just love the horror stuff and love the the B stuff and stuff that's just hard to find. You're blowing me up as a Oh, he's exposing me. Yeah, I read that earlier. Uh, and I saw this in, in an interview earlier this week, you talking about this. I, I, I get scared. I mean, what, what do I? 
What am I supposed to say? I get scared. I'm a scary cat. But you're what? brave enough to admit it. I am. Thank you. And not everybody appreciates that. And I'm trying. <laughs> I'm really trying. I, I really I really felt after, you know, behind the mask, I, I really felt um, that people, <laughs> yeah, you're really sorry. Um, I, I, I really felt a responsibility for, um, you know, not just repping the film, but I felt like I had to rep the genre in a way, you know, and, and so I, I made an effort to try to, you know, see what it is that, what, what all the hubbub was about, you know, and um, fortunately, I started watching uh, uh, Svengooli with my kids. Uh, uh, it, it, the programming started, <laughs> started um, uh, out here, we started you know, picking up this program. And so we were able to make a big thing out of Saturday night, um, you know, watching, you know, a couple of Batman episodes, a couple of Star Trek episodes, you know, and then we get a, a you know, a horror feature uh, in Spengooly style. And we were able to start building up a, you know, a, a, a library of classics just from watching, um, just from watching that show. And, and since then, we've we've you know matured and into some of the more in-your-face type stuff. Uh, um, I just a couple of weeks ago took my oldest out and we, we uh, did the, the um, uh, Evil Dead trilogy, um, which yeah. was fantastic. You know, it was a, just a really cool experience. You know, and I I I, I the more I uh, allow the genre in the more um, it pays off for me. So. It, it, being an evil, big Evil Dead fan, uh, if you ever get a chance to see the musical, I, I highly, highly recommend it. I've seen it twice. It, it is such a good time. The what is? The Evil Dead, the musical. The musical? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know there was a Yeah, it, it, it tours. I, I've seen it twice in Toronto. It, it is just, it is so much fun. And, uh, I have to keep my eye out for that. Yeah, so you know, the first five rows are guaranteed to be soaked in fake blood, uh, which I did not tell my girlfriend the second time. So, because we saw it the first time and we had seats in the back and we realized everybody was getting covered in fake blood. And she's like, when I got tickets the second time, she's like, you didn't get tickets in the splatter zone, did you? I'm like, no. And then, so we're covered in corn syrup and food coloring or whatever it is. And we walked into our hotel in Toronto after the show and the concierge just went, you know, I was just like, how you doing? That's how you make an entrance. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, uh, we'll take care of the deposit uh, on checkout. <laughs> right. Uh, no, me and Steve were talking about the black phone earlier. Uh, we haven't seen it. Nathan, have you see, seen the black phone? No, I haven't. No. I quite enjoyed the book. It, if, and it looks like it stays very close alongside. So I'll be really impressed if they do. Well, again, uh, thanks so much for taking time out of your, your day to do this, Nathan. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll look forward to uh, Crossbow Creek and maybe, maybe something from other. Like, we'll get the band back together one of these days. We'll do it. It's I mean, that, that ending scene of you sitting, the like, guy was just, I was watching, I was about to walk out of the room and I'm like, okay, I know he's going to sit up. I know he's going to sit up. Yeah. yeah. And we gave it. You knew it was going to happen, and we gave it to you. <laughs> and it was still awesome. It was still yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah no, All right, it's, everybody. It's a story to tell, and uh, and everybody was was super cool. And I know everybody is down to to, to make it happen again. So it's just a matter of time. We'll oh, make it happen. Excellent. Great to hear. Very cool. All Thanks right, for everybody. Me. For Thanks. Nathan, for Steve, for myself, the Metal Manalite. This has been another episode of Two Severed Heads, or three when we have a guest yeah. uh thanks for watching everybody we'll see you in two weeks uh next week or in two weeks uh john philbin will be on the show uh you remember john from uh return of the living dead he was point in break. point break yeah one of the bank robbers uh tombstone uh, great great catalog of movies so i uh, look forward to talking to him uh he just got back from indonesia on a big surfing trip so i'm sure we'll get to talk all about that uh so tune in and come see us. We, 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 we love to hear from you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Peace.